Imagine a world where 90% of all life suddenly vanishes. No, this isn't a sci-fi movie. It's happened five times in Earth's history. 99.9% .9 of all species that ever lived on Earth are now extinct. And the scary part, we might be triggering the sixth mass extinction. Today, we're diving into the five deadliest mass extinctions, events so catastrophic they reshaped life itself. Stick around, because some of these facts will blow your mind. The first killer, the Ordovician Silurian extinction, about 445 million years ago. The Earth looked very different. Almost all life was in the oceans, land empty. Nothing had crawled out of the ocean yet. There were no trees, no insects, no animals on land. Life was thriving underwater. There were trilobites, ancient relatives of today's insects, brachiopods, shelled creatures fixed to the sea floor, corals, sponges and jawless fish, giant reefs, calm shallow seas and rich marine biodiversity. It was a water world, calm, beautiful and full of life. The climate, warm and stable, oceans covered vast parts of the continents, life was blooming. It was the perfect age for marine creatures. Out of nowhere, climate began to shift. The supercontinent Gondwana drifted toward the South Pole, and with it came something deadly, glaciers. Yes, glaciers in what is now the Sahara Desert. As glaciers formed, sea levels dropped dramatically by as much as 100 meters. This meant shallow coastal seas disappeared, habitats vanished overnight, marine temperatures plummeted, life forms used to warm shallow waters struggled to survive. This was the first wave of extinction. It was slow but devastating. Species couldn't migrate or adapt fast enough. Oxygen levels in deep oceans fell, food chains collapsed. Imagine the ocean turning into a cold, lifeless desert. But just when some organisms started adjusting to the cold, the earth warmed up again. The ice melted. Glaciers retreated. And this brought the second wave of destruction. Massive flooding, sudden rise in sea levels, changes in ocean salinity and chemistry, disruption of ocean currents, huge reduction in oxygen levels in water, called anoxia. This second punch was even worse. The few species that survived the cold couldn't handle the rapid warming and toxic oceans. Boom, extinction deepened. The victims, trilobites. Most species were wiped out. Brachiopods and bryozoans severely reduced. Corals, many reef builders vanished. Graptolites, tiny floating animals, almost entirely gone. In fact, over 60% of all genera and 85% of marine species disappeared. The survivors? A few hardy jawless fish. Some deep sea species that were used to low oxygen. Certain algae and microbial life. Nature's rule was clear, adapt fast or vanish. But life, like always, found a way. After the storm came calm. In the Silurian period, the survivors started to evolve. New forms of fish appeared, with stronger bodies and better movement. Corals began building new reef systems, and something amazing started to happen. The first land plants began colonizing the empty earth. Small moss-like greenery clung to moist soil near water. It was the start of something much bigger. The extinction, while tragic, opened up space for evolution to try something new. The first mass extinction wasn't caused by fire or fury, it was caused by cold and change. The Ordovician Silurian extinction was Earth's first major reset, the second strike, the late Devonian extinction, Earth's long goodbye. It was the Devonian period, often called the Age of Fishes. Oceans were packed with armored fish like Dunkleosteus, some as big as a school bus. Coral reefs stretched for kilometers, trilobites scuttled across the sea floor, and for the first time, life was pushing out of the water onto land. Simple plants and tiny insects began to colonize the land masses. It seemed like nothing could go wrong, but it did. Unlike other mass extinctions that hit like a meteor, the Devonian extinction was more like a slow bleed. It didn't happen overnight. In fact, it dragged on for over 20 million years, Yes, 20 million years of repeated blows. Scientists believe it wasn't one single event, but a series of extinction pulses. 
the most dramatic one occurring around 372 million years ago. This extinction wiped out 75% of all marine species. It's believed that global cooling played a major role, but ironically, the cause of this cooling might have been plants. Yes, plants. As land plants spread, they sucked carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere through photosynthesis. Less CO2 meant less of a greenhouse effect, and that triggered global cooling. The cooling messed with ocean temperatures and currents, disrupting marine ecosystems. As the climate changed, ocean layers stopped mixing properly. This led to vast dead zones, regions of the ocean with no oxygen. Without oxygen, marine life suffocated. Imagine the richest aquarium on Earth suddenly becoming a lifeless, stagnant pool. Some scientists believe that underwater volcanoes might have erupted during this period, pouring lava and toxic gases into the oceans. These gases could have released hydrogen sulfide, poisoning life and damaging the ozone layer. This would have allowed more UV radiation to reach Earth, killing surface organisms and slowing recovery. Coral reefs, once vast and diverse, were devastated. They didn't fully recover for 100 million years. Armored fishes called placoderms, like the mighty Dunkleosteus, disappeared forever. Trilobites took a massive hit. In fact, most large, slow-moving marine animals vanished. With the seas emptied, survivors had room to evolve and diversify. This extinction set the stage for the rise of tetrapods, creatures with four limbs, which would eventually evolve into amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals, including us. Sometimes mass extinctions are not just endings, they're new beginnings, painful as they may be. 250 million years ago, Earth went through a catastrophe so massive it almost wiped out all life on the planet. This is the story of the third extinction, Permian-Triassic extinction, also known as the Great Dying, the worst mass extinction event in Earth's history. It was the Permian period. About 299 to 252 million years ago, the continents were fused into a giant supercontinent called Pangaea. Vast deserts stretched across the interior. Dense forests hugged the coasts. The climate, harsh and dry in the interior, warm and moist near the coasts. Life was booming. In the oceans, you had trilobites, ammonites, coral reefs. On land, giant insects, early reptiles, mammal-like creatures called therapsids. Earth was buzzing with biodiversity. It was a time of evolutionary creativity. But all of that was about to change. Oceans started turning acidic. Oxygen levels dropped. Coral reefs vanished. Then it spread to land. Forests withered. Massive wildfires raged. Entire food chains collapsed. It wasn't a single event. It was a chain reaction of disasters that snowballed into a global catastrophe. 96% of marine species went extinct. 70% of land vertebrates vanished. Even insects, usually survivors, saw massive losses. The leading suspect is massive volcanic eruptions in Siberia, specifically the Siberian Traps. This was no ordinary eruption. It wasn't a single explosion. It was millions of years of lava oozing out of the Earth's crust, covering over 7 million square kilometers. And it wasn't just the lava. The real killers were the gases. Carbon dioxide caused global warming. Sulfur dioxide led to acid rain. Methane supercharged the greenhouse effect. Earth became a pressure cooker. Temperatures rose by 8 degrees Celsius globally. Oceans turned into poisonous soup. Rain became acidic forests burned and released more CO2. Making things worse, it created a feedback loop, a death spiral. More gas led to more heat. More heat led to more gas, and the cycle continued. After the extinction, Earth was unrecognizable. Imagine walking through a forest and seeing nothing move. No birds, no insects, no mammals, just silence. This was Earth after the Great Dying. Coral reefs gone for 10 million years. Entire orders of marine life vanished. The skies were likely filled with ash. The oceans were still lifeless. The biosphere took a hit it would take 10 million years to recover from. Fungi thrived on dead matter. Slowly new species emerged. Early dinosaurs, mammals, and resilient marine life. 
On land, only a few hardy species survived, like Lystrosaurus, a tusked herbivore that dominated the post-extinction world. This extinction reset evolution's clock. Without it, dinosaurs and eventually mammals might never have dominated. Roughly 200 million years ago, the stability shattered. Earth was once again thrown into chaos in what we now call the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event, the fourth extinction event in which three out of every four species disappeared. Many large amphibians vanished. Mammal-like reptiles took a heavy hit. Entire marine ecosystems collapsed, and the diversity of early reptiles was drastically reduced. At that time, something violent was happening beneath the Earth's surface. The supercontinent Pangaea was beginning to rift apart. This rifting didn't just split continents, it tore the Earth's crust open, creating one of the largest volcanic events in planetary history. This region, today called the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province, CAMP, stretched across what is now Eastern North America, Western Africa, parts of Europe, and Northern South America. This wasn't your average volcanic eruption, it was continental-scale flood basalt volcanism, Picture lava fields the size of countries, erupting in waves over hundreds of thousands of years. What did these eruptions do? Released trillions of tons of carbon dioxide, CO2, and methane, CH4, into the atmosphere, triggering runaway global warming. Pumped sulfur dioxide, SO2, and ash into the sky, leading to acid rain, which damaged plants and poisoned freshwater systems ejected toxic metals like mercury into the environment, which have been found in sediments from that period. The volcanic gases, especially greenhouse gases like CO2 and methane, had long-term consequences. The Earth's atmosphere thickened. Global temperatures skyrocketed. As the climate warmed, it created feedback loops. Warmer temperatures melted methane clathrates, frozen methane deposits under the sea, once released, Methane, a powerful greenhouse gas, made things even worse. Melting ice and shifting tectonic plates also led to rapid sea level changes which disrupted shallow marine ecosystems. Coral reefs and shell-forming organisms vital to marine food chains suffered terribly. Low oxygen levels in oceans suffocated marine life, especially bottom-dwelling species. Many large amphibians, especially the crocodile-like temnospondyls, disappeared. Marine reptiles, like the placodonts, were wiped out. Mammal-like reptiles, drastically reduced in diversity. Early archosaurs, a group that included early crocodiles and dinosaurs, suffered heavy losses. Dinosaurs, relatively small and less dominant during the Triassic, survived. Before the extinction, they were just one of many reptile groups, not particularly dominant. Many early dinosaurs were small, lightweight, and bipedal. With no competitors, over the next 10 million years, they evolved into the towering giants of the Jurassic, eventually becoming Earth's dominant terrestrial animals for the next 135 million years. Pterosaurs, these flying reptiles, the first vertebrates to achieve powered flight, also survived the extinction. With skies relatively empty and few aerial predators, they diversified and became widespread in the Jurassic skies. The extinction set up a new cast of characters for the Jurassic. Without it, dinosaurs might never have ruled, and mammals, including us, might never have evolved. The last or the fifth extinction happened 66 million years ago, known as Cretaceous Paleogene, KPG extinction. Back then, dinosaurs ruled the land, pterosaurs soared through the skies, and giant marine reptiles hunted in the oceans. A 10-15 kilometer wide asteroid, traveling at 72,000 kilometers per hour, slammed into what is now the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, creating the Chicxulub Crater, a scar over 180 kilometers wide. That's like Mount Everest crashing down at 20 times the speed of sound. The explosion released energy equivalent to 10 billion Hiroshima bombs. Winds of 1,000 kilometers per hour ripped through continents. Wildfires ignited across the globe. A mega tsunami hundreds of meters high devastated coastlines. Dust, sulfur, and soot were blasted into the atmosphere, blocking sunlight for months, maybe even years. 
temperatures plummeted, photosynthesis collapsed, the food chain broke down, more than 75% of all species vanished. Not just dinosaurs, ammonites, marine reptiles like mosasaurs, flying pterosaurs and even tiny plankton, gone. While non-avian dinosaurs perished, one group survived, the birds. Yes, modern birds are the direct descendants of dinosaurs. Their small size, ability to fly, and adaptive behavior might have helped them survive the catastrophe. Ironically, the extinction that wiped out dinosaurs paved the way for mammals, and eventually, humans. With dinosaurs gone, mammals began to evolve, diversify, and conquer land, water, and sky. Without the asteroid, we might never have existed. Here's a scary thought. Some scientists believe we are living through the sixth mass extinction right now. Species are disappearing at a rate 100 to 1,000 times faster than normal. Deforestation, climate change, pollution, overfishing, and habitat loss are driving the crisis. And unlike the others, this one is caused by a single species, us. But there's hope because we can also be the ones to stop it. We've explored deep oceans, sent probes to Mars, and unlocked secrets of DNA. Surely we can protect the only home we have. Mass extinctions aren't just history. They are nature's reset buttons, painful, powerful, and full of lessons. They teach us how fragile and how resilient life can be, and they remind us of the incredible journey that led from trilobites to TikTok, from jawless fish to humans building space telescopes. And the story of life on Earth is still being written.